No one will ever really notice your period issues with PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, because that's the invisible part of the condition. What they will see is what can lower your self-esteem, the acne and the excess facial or body hair, which is also known as hirsutism. I've always looked to explore ways to understand and tame both these issues. I spoke about acne in detail a couple of weeks ago, which is why today I'll focus on hirsutism. Before jumping into the deep end, we should understand what PCOS is, but feel free to use the timestamps in the description box to get to the hirsutism part of the video in case you're already aware about PCOS and how it's connected with hirsutism. It'll help you get to the main part of how to manage hirsutism quicker, the timestamps. Also, please remember that I am not a medical professional. I am a patient sharing her experiences, so please seek a medical professional for your case. Now, what is PCOS? Affecting at least one in 10 women, polycystic ovarian syndrome is a condition in which women of reproductive years have imbalanced hormones. Women can often develop multiple cysts, small fluid-filled sacs inside their ovaries, hence the name polycystic. But according to WebMD, not all women who have PCOS actually have cysts. For me, I do. In fact, it always shows up in my ultrasound as bulky, enlarged ovaries, which is an indicator of PCOS. These cysts are follicles, each containing an immature egg. Sadly, these eggs don't mature enough for ovulation to occur. Healthline.com further explains, and I'm going to quote them, the lack of ovulation alters levels of estrogen, progesterone, FSH, and LH. Estrogen and progesterone levels are lower than usual, while androgen levels are higher than usual. Extra male hormones disrupt the menstrual cycle. Unquote. What are the symptoms of polycystic ovarian syndrome? Now, there are multiple symptoms of PCOS and not everyone will get all the symptoms, but I'll share a list of the most common ones. So there's hormonal imbalance, irregular or too regular periods, pelvic pain, heavy bleeding, infertility, acne, oily skin, excessive body hair growth, which is hirsutism, thinning hair from the head, mood swings, depression, there is weight gain, patchy skin tone, there is also headaches. So, which hormones are involved in PCOS? Now, the body produces multiple hormones, but it's usually the three hormones that I'm going to speak of which cause most trouble for women with PCOS. The first is uh, testosterone. So this is a male hormone, which is usually found in small amounts in women. But if you have PCOS, this is usually elevated. Second is luteinizing hormone. I think I got that right. LH, LH, let's stick with LH. So this stimulates ovulation, but if the levels are elevated, then this process gets disrupted as well. Lastly, hmm. sex hormone binding globulin, SHBG. So this hormone looks to reduce the effects of the testosterone hormone, but in women with PCOS, this is usually too low to perform its job. Reasons for this hormonal imbalance isn't known, but according to the NHS, and I'm going to quote the NHS, it's been suggested that the problem may start in the ovary itself, in other glands that produce these hormones, or in the part of the brain that controls their production. The changes may also be caused by the resistance to insulin. <sighs> now, let's get back onto the topic. What is hirsutism? Hirsutism is the term used to describe a condition in which excessive facial and body hair growth is seen in women. This is usually dark and coarse, but I have seen this vary in some people whom I, have, I know to have hirsutism. So hirsutism usually occurs when the female body produces excess male androgen 
hormones such as testosterone. For many, hirsutism isn't just about excess body hair, but it includes balding, decreased breast size, and increased muscle mass too. The male hormones take over multiple areas of the female body. There are a number of medical conditions that are related to hirsutism, like PCOS, Cushing syndrome, and congenital adrenal hyperplasia, amongst others. But I'm specifically going to stick to PCOS because I understand it better. So now to bring everything I've said together, and with all this happening, how do we manage excessive facial or body hair, the hirsutism? So over the years, I have figured three ways to manage my hirsutism and I'll share that with you here. All three are connected, so you may feel like it's all overlapping because it is. So here goes. Number one, mental. I first encountered hirsutism when I was 11, 12 years old. I didn't know there was a term for this. But I'm glad there was. Somehow, the issue got validation. A name to this meant that others had it too. I didn't feel alone. But that aside, hirsutism can really lower your self-confidence. You constantly feel someone is looking at your face. So when you're going to school and it's not happening to the person next to you, you can see them snigger or make fun of you. My mom would constantly give me confidence and say that facial hair is normal, but said that if it made me feel better, I could use a hair removing cream, which I did. But with PCOS and hirsutism, you'll find that the higher the imbalance, the quicker the growth. That's what happened with me. So I gained confidence for a few days and then the second half of the week, I wouldn't feel like that. Like it start to come back. Over the years, I have tried many ways to reduce and hopefully stop the excess growth. I'll share the ones that work best for me a little ahead, but speaking mentally, as I developed confidence in how I spoke and carried myself, my emphasis on my facial hair reduced because I knew I could not be picture perfect all the time. I had unfair expectations of myself and that I was taking away and that it was taking away from me being happy. The one thing that PCOS, endometriosis, or any hormone-driven issue does is throw you towards depression. And when you have facial hair to deal with, it can be quite depressing. So to save myself from that, just my shift in working on me, the person, helped me reduce the significance and the mental impact of facial hair was having on my life. Number two, hormonal. Let's look at this logically. If the male hormone reduces and comes under control, then ideally so should the hirsutism, right? Yep, makes sense. As my testosterone was brought under control, I could see a difference in the hair growth cycle and the quality of my skin. Testosterone being a male hormone also promotes aggression. And it was in my 20s that I started to realize that I was being controlled by this hormone just a little too much for my liking. I would regularly engage myself in slow breathing, eating right, meditation, yoga, stretches, and even early morning Tai Chi to help control my hormones. These practices really worked well for me. My other option was to be on hormonal medication, which wasn't working well with my endometriosis, so I chose to stay away. Today, my testosterone levels are where they should be, in control, but I still have hirsutism, which is far, far, far more controlled than ever in my life. Number three, physical action. So you can say Tai Chi, yoga, slow breathing, meditation, all come under this heading of physical action. Yes, they do, but those were all to work on the mind and the hormones. But now I want to explain the methods I tried to reduce the actual hair. So as I said earlier, I started with hair removing cream. This never worked well in the long run for me because I have sensitive skin and it added to my acne issues. And because this only removes here, hair, hair, hair from the surface, the hair came back too fast for me. Plus, as a teenager, my hormone imbalances were at its worst, so I'm sure that didn't help the situation either. 
then there is waxing out. Doing this yourself with hairs growing in different directions led to ingrowths and aggravated the acne. So I would suggest always to get it done from a professional because they can see your face better than you can and they can get the angles better as well. But I do love how the growth came back slower because the hair was being removed from the root itself. But this could not be a regular option for me because, I, because of the acne and because of the sensitive skin. Next was laser hair reduction treatment. To be a good laser candidate, you need to have dark hair on lightish skin. I had both and luckily I knew someone who was just starting out with her laser machine so I was happy to give this laser hair reduction treatment a, grow, a go. So this worked very well for me. The hair growth didn't stop entirely but it made most of the hair thinner and softer making them less visible from a mile away. Um, so this is a very expensive option and after the friend who was doing this fell sick, I could never really go anywhere else. But her efforts did give me long lasting joys and I am so grateful for that. Then there is um, shaving. So this was done at the beginning of every laser appointment by the technician to prepare me for the session. I don't need to adopt this method but I have seen many online who use facial razors designed for women and know the hair growth isn't known to come back thicker. Instead, it's a super quick and convenient option if you're in a rush, especially for thin hairs on the face. Lastly, threading or epilating. Both threading and epilating remove hair from the root, more like it pulls it from the root out giving it a nice, smooth, clean finish. And threading is, a, is great if someone else is doing it for me. And the epilator is perfect if I have to do it. So this is actually my favorite option so far, both threading and epilating. For me, a combination of working on my mental state, taking action to keep the hormones in check and aiding my appearance through good skin care Threading and epilating has helped me the most, the whole combination. I believe that anything which is connected with our hormones can be helped and worked upon by improving our mental state. It's also the toughest thing to do, definitely tougher than popping more pills, but its benefits, benefits and lessons are essential for growth, happiness and hormonal calm. If I look back now, I wish I could tell the 11 year old me all of this. I may have faced lesser stresses, but that's not possible. So I've done the next best thing and shared this with all of you. So do what you need to do medically to combat your chronic illness, but just don't forget the, medic the mental side. If you, found, if you have found this video helpful, then do give it a like and a share. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.